بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الأحبة في الله continuing on in our study of شر السنة by Imam Barbahari رحمة الله عليه and we we use different شروحات of the ulama like Sheikh Ahmed Al Najmi and I think we will get back on some of the fawaid from Sheikh Ahmed Al Najmi رحمة الله عليه because his is more concise. And also Alama uh, 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 Sheikh Salim bin Fozan, Hafidullah Ta'ala, and Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi al Medkhali, Hafidullah Ta'ala, and some of our other ulama. But those are the main three that I use uh, in our explanation. Qala al Musannif, Rahimullah Ta'ala, we left off, we were talking about the ruler and we talked about the Khawarij, those who make takfir of Muslims for the major sins. And something that's very important with the Khawarij, and we'll make this also a lesson, mustaqilla, a, a specific talk that I will speak about the Khawarij on another occasion to give some more detail and insight to see why do the ulama today and throughout history, why do they refer to some groups that don't seem to have all the pure characteristics of the Khawarij as Khawarij. If they have some issues of takfir, they, for example, a lot of times the ulama refer to the neo-takfiri groups as Khawarij. Why? Because they don't have the same exact aqidah as the original Khawarij. And to make this concise, the reason being is because they do contain some of the basic elements of ignorance usually. Youth and ignorance and zeal, religious zeal and extremism, which are all characteristics of the Khawarij as well. So that's why you have to know that when somebody is Khawarijji, that doesn't mean necessarily that they make takfir for all the major sins. But instead, what we would say probably more appropriate about most of the modern day takfiri groups is that they make takfir they focus on the government and the ulama, the scholars of Islam and people who do not who disagree with them in general so they confine it to usually the issue of rulership whereas the original Khawarij also dealt, it was rulership they made takfir of those who they felt were not ruling the sharia according to their understanding and this is the case with the uh, modern day takfiris but the original Khawarij also had some other deficiency with uh, regarding to their understanding in Iman. They believed that Iman was either complete or Iman was uh, non-existent. So they believed that a person uh, was either a mu'min or if they did major sins, they drank alcohol, they committed zina, whatever the situation was, they may take fear of them. Whereas the modern day groups, they may not go to that extreme on that level, but they focus their take fear with regards to the issue of rulership in accordance with their understanding of when they believe someone is not ruling by the Sharia sufficiently enough for them and then they lead to the next stage that means it's permissible to rebel and that they're disbelievers and their police are disbelievers and their army is disbelievers so you can fight and then the next thing you know they go on to suicide bombings and, and other actions which they believe is a legitimate uh, jihad but in fact according to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah and Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah in this time and throughout time that this is batal, this is false and this is not the time and place to go into further details but we have spoken about this countless times so go back to some of the earlier net lessons bi idnillah ta'ala so Imam Barbahari rahmatullahi he said qal He said that in the 34th point, in this explanation, it's not numbered that way, but he said, وَلَا يُحِلْ كِتَالَ sultan وَلَا خُرُوجْ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنْ جَارْ وَذَلِكَ لِقَوْلِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لِأَبِي ذَارَ الْغَفَارِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَنْعِنْهُ أَسْمَى وَطِيعْ وَنْ كَانَ عَبْدٍ حَبَشِيًا وقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم للانصار أصبروا حتى تلقوني على الحوض 
وَلَيْسَ فِي سُنَّةِ كِتَابَ سُلْطَانٍ فَإِنَّ فِيهِ فَسَادَ الدُّنْيَا وَدِينٍ. And we spoke about this fikra of Imam Barbahari, where he said it is not permissible to fight the ruler or to rebel against him, even if he oppresses. And this is due to the saying of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to Abi Dhar al Ghafari radiallahu taalaanu, have patience even if he is an Abyssinian slave, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. And his saying to the Ansar, have patience until you meet me at the pool, the pool in his hold in Jannah. Uh, there is no fighting against the ruler in the Sunnah. It causes destruction of the religion and the worldly affairs. What's very important for us, ahabatifillah, is that this is the goal of the Salaf. This is the call of Imam Barbahari, who we said died in. Uh, Imam Barbahari died when? He died to Wafi, uh, uh, Wafi, 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 uh, 322 Hijri and this Ahabatifillah shows us that this is from the uh, this is from the creed of the Salaf and that this this Qaeda is not something new because a lot of people they want to attack the ulama of Ahl Sunnah and claim that they are scholars for dollars or they're ulama hukam you know they're scholars of the leaders or they are scholars of this or scholars of that or, or as uh, one of the big hizbis from Kuwait says uh, that they are ulama haith when they fast, that they are scholars of uh, purification or scholars of uh, menstru menstruation and uh, postnatal bleeding, meaning that their, their knowledge is only confined to that, it's not confined to worldly affairs. All of these uh, slanders and attacks against Ahlul Sunnah and the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah. Uh, in fact, only you harm those people who hold these claims. And usually you'll find probably Tis'in bi Mia, you know, 90% of the people who make these claims are Jahil, Juhala. People who are just from the general Muslims, who don't know much about the religion or have read some translated sources, maybe some have Arabic, whatever the case may be, but they're generally from the general Muslims who get involved in a lot of political affairs and things. Uh, in accordance with their hawa, in accordance with their desires, so then it's easy for them to make hukum or make ahkam based on their desires, and they'll be held responsible uh, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this because they speak about knowledge, uh, speak about this deen without the right to do so, and they speak about the, uh, the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the ulama, the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, those people who have knowledge and practice, they fear Allah. The most God-fearing people is the ulama, it's the scholars. So, with that being said, it shows us the importance of respecting the ulama and being aware, being aware and beware of those people who make these uh, filthy wrong uh, accusations and go against Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Fahim the Salaf. And it sounds like a cliche when I say that, but this is this is exactly it. That's why we're studying this book by uh, uh, Imam Baba Hari Rahmatullah who died 329 Hijri. And his book, his Risala, Shara Sunnah, uh, codified or is a codification of the Aqidah and Minhaj of Ahlul Sunnah Tibu Jama'ah and what the Salaf of this Ummah, what they were upon. If you want to know what the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in were upon, what the tabi'in uh, rahimahumullah jami'an were upon, and the itba'a tabi'in rahimahumullah jami'an, then you will pay attention to and read and refer back and go back to these books, these sources, which are imperative for us to, uh, to study and to benefit from and to have on our tongues. We want to know the uh, the correct creed that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has legislated for us.
I hope with Tifillah, the next point Imam Baba Hari said, uh, he said, Rahimullah Ta'ala, Wala yuhil kitab al khawarij idha aradu lil muslimin fi anfusihim wa amwalihim, wa laysa lahu idha faraquhu an yatlab an yatlabuhum, wa la yujahiz ala jarihihim, wa la yakhud fiahum, wa la yaktu asirahum, wa la yatiba mudabbarahum. Imam Baba Hari Rahmatullah said, it is neither permissible, uh, he said it is permissible to fight the Khawarij, first and foremost. So we know this, and you'll find this in the books of Fiqh, you'll find in the books of all the Madhabs, especially the more detailed books that mention uh, in the chapter of, uh, the chapter of, after the, in the chapter of the Hadood, talking about the punishments and legislations, you'll find uh, these tafsir, like in Imam Nawawi's, uh, his, his book, Minhaj al-Talib, and some of the other more uh, detailed fiqh books, you'll find this, and of course, Mubni, and, and in the books of all the madahib, the more detailed ones, you'll find the ahkam of Ridda, you know, those people who, you know, how to deal with rebels, and how to deal with people who have left the fold of Islam, and all of those ahkam. So you'll find these, these things and they're based upon the nasus, they're based on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam. So Imam Baba Hari Rahmatullah said it is permissible to fight the Khawarij if they attack the, the people, their, their persons, property or families of the Muslims. But if they desist and flee, they may not be chased, nor are their wounded to be killed, nor set upon, nor may those taken captive be killed. So if you if the Khawarij are captured, uh, if they're wounded after fighting are captured, they're not to be killed, nor are those who flee to be followed. So this is, Imam Baba Hari uh, mentioned this to show that in his view and according to many of the Salaf, that the Khawarij were considered Muslim, that they were not considered outside of the fold of Islam. However, some of the Salaf and some of the later generations viewed the Khawarij based on the Nasus, based on the prophetic text that the Prophet ﷺ said that they would uh, enter the deen like an arrow and, and leave the deen like an arrow enters its prey, you know, and goes out the back of its prey. So meaning that they would exit from Islam. Yukhruj min Islam. Khawarij, kharaja yukhruju khawarij. That they would, they would uh, leave, and this comes even from the verb of making uh, khuruj, or kharaja to exit and khuruj is like to leave or something but khuruj also refers to to leaving the jama'ah of the Muslims or uh, to rebel or go against the leader because you've broken away from the main body of Muslims and this is where you get the name one of the reasons for the name of uh, uh, khuraj and with that ahabitifillah as I said some of the salaf made takfir of the Khawarij because they said that the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu illustrates that they would leave the deen. They would leave the deen as, as the arrow exits its prey. So meaning that they would leave the religion and be non-Muslims. So then their ahkam, their rulings would be different than what we've already mentioned. But Imam Baba Hari, uh, as with many of the Salaf, held that the Khawarij were, uh, were from Ahl Bid'ah, they were innovators that they were sinful and uh, rebels. But also the Sharia, Habitatullah, to distinguish, it distinguishes between rebels and the Khawarij. The Khawarij are those, they rebel be due to their creed, due to their Aqidah. And then there are those who rebel who are considered rebels. And so the Sharia, it does distinguish between, and you'll see in some of the older books, where they distinguish between uh, the rebels, you know, make, rebels making rebellion and the Khawarij making rebellion, who for their creed, reasons of belief of making takfir and so forth, that they rebel against the leader. So those are some of the ahkam that Imam Baba Hari mentioned, rahimahullah ta'ala. Uh, then the Imam said, rahmatullah 
واعلم انه لا طاعة لبشر في معصية الله عز وجل. And so he mentioned also the importance that there is no obedience uh, in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said obedience is only in that which is good. Uh, and the Prophet sallallahu said, hearing and obeying is binding upon the Muslim and what he likes or dislikes, so long as he is not ordered to do sin. And if he is ordered with sin, then there is no hearing or obeying. This or obeying. And this is recorded in Bukhari, also in Muslim, and Sunan Abi Dawood. So those are some important issues with regards to uh, dealing with the Khawarij and the concept of rebellion and as we mentioned on countless times so this it's not necessary for us to spend extensive time as we want to continue on with the treaties you can go back to some of the earlier lessons where we talked extensively about it and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas with the battle of sunnah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam